This is a full review of the Mercedes GLE, today as GLE 450, today in a German test here also with the German Autobahn ride and more about this new suspension feature e-active body control, we have it also here today. And exterior, interior and the whole driving experience here on Autogefühl, as you know from us, with Thomas, everything of that in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front here, the new GLE generation looks a little bit sportier, more agile also with the accentuations here on the hood. This is the standard front grille design with a two horizontal fin layout. The AMG line exterior would have the diamond pin grille. Then the daytime running light is here still with two stripes. They changed that with the E-Class facelifts for example, with the sedan and recently also then now with the coupe, but still here the SUV in the GLE gets the two stripe design, I think more beautiful. Starts with LED and optional the multi-beam LED also with extended high beam function. 4 meters 92, 16 foot 1 or 194 inches is the length of the GLE. There's the bigger brother as GLS also available. Wheel size actually from 18 to 22 inch. These ones here are 21 inch. You can also get the wheel arches in the body color, but this one here, the standard setup with the crossover wheel arches. Suspension wise, very interesting. You get a standard seal suspension, then you have the optional air suspension, as you know. And then there's the e-active body control, which can actually lean inside the corners. Very interesting technology. And it also has some special off-road functions. So actually you can Tune every single wheel with the suspension above that, where it shall lean in or out. That's a very interesting piece. If you need it, we'll talk about it later in the driving part. Design-wise, the GLE has still this one characteristic feature, and that is the C-pillar that is leaning forward. You always recognize the GLE with this design feature. The rear has actually been changed most significantly in this new generation with the new horizontal tail lamp design and the signature right there and definitely more modern. The lower part by the way these ones here are fake tips but it's not like a 100% fake exhaust so yeah I'm not sure if that's a job for the fake exhaust police. I think still yes yeah. <laughs> so the real exhaust are then on the inside but overall I think a quite likable design here for the GLE. Rather conservative still, not too drastic changes. I think it works. What do you think? As for engines, you start with a 2-liter 4-cylinder, the 350 with 255 horsepower. That one is available in the US but not on the European market. Then the 450, today also here, the 3-liter 6-cylinder, 367 horsepower, now with mild hybrid technology, 5.7 second the acceleration figure. Also available with the off-road package. Then there's the AMG 53, 3-liter 6-cylinder, 435 horsepower. Then the 580 is the 4 liter V8 with 589 horsepower and also MF technology now. And then the top horsepower spec, the AMG 63, 4 liter V8, 571 or 612 horsepower in the S. And diesels, 300D, 2 liter 4 cylinder, 245 horsepower, 350D, 3 liter 6 cylinder, 272 horsepower, or as 400D, then with 330 horsepower. And then there's the plug-in hybrid, the BF 350DE 2 liter 4 cylinder diesel with 320 horsepower system output, 100 kilometers or 60 miles of pure electric range. And we also have a review of that. And then we also expect a petrol plug-in hybrid soon.
first door closing sound. Mmm, very solid. And also, when you use the handles here, they even give you a nice sound feedback. And now, interior here with the Artico soft touch leather red cover, seat control inside of the doors with a brushed aluminum look here today, reasonable door pockets. Then, on the interior, we have the AMG line today. That means AMG steering wheel here with this brushed aluminum style, otherwise it would be high gloss black, so more beautiful than this, I think. And AMG floor mats, aluminum pedals, and here the sport seats, so there are base comfort seats available, and these are the sport seats with a little bit more support. And AMG line auto automatically comes with microfiber dynamic on the inside, and article leather red on the outside, so this is an animal free choice, and also good in the climate comfort. In the European market, actually, my pick would be either this one also, or fabric on the inside and leather red on the outside because the gray fabric looks a little bit more contrastish and stays even a little bit cooler in summer but for the us market i would definitely go for this one because the fabric is not available there or if you want some spilling protection have a lot of kids or something then of course a full article seat is also available with a slick surface in black and beige in espresso color so they offer a lot of animal free choices that's really very cool with the GLE and one of the other cool features is the ambient lighting here's one of the key features of that getting inside and yeah shoe tap so it's a very nice comfortable seating position again the sport seat offers you a little bit more support here and very cozy and high class with the microfiber surface steering wheel here starts of course with a manual control but in this case here also an electric control for the steering wheel up and down and in and out and you feel, really find a good seating position here also as a tall person um, if you put the seat all the way down then there's a lot of headroom still with 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. I usually put it a little bit up in the back part so the angle is a little bit changed, more comfortable. There's also panoramic roof available that makes you lose some headroom, but panoramic roofs are also the you know, fancy for leaving some air in. Here with a microfiber ceiling on the inside, that's also a very cool solution. So one of the most comfortable vehicles here overall, I think, good for longer road trips and so on. I really feel cozy, really feel at home here. So yeah, only positive things I can really see about that. And you don't have to spec it all the way max out fancy, even with some base GLEs, you'll be just fine. Now to the interior overview, which has a beautiful design, I think. Here with the brushed aluminum look, you're gonna get different decor elements, then article leather red dashboard, soft touch, it also looks nice with some contrast stitches. Screen setup two times, 12.3 inch, also quite impressive and also has this voice input with, hey Mercedes. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Increase the temperature. 16 degrees on the driver's side. So and then also, if you've seen that, when you increase the temperature, then there's like a the red light and you can also use it here with the ambient lighting so when you put it colder it's blue light when you put it warmer then there's red light so really beautifully done cool idea and with the voice input you can say the same mercedes or then activate it here at the steering wheel and then you can also put some gps input and so on and even ask them questions sometimes you know like or turning on and off the head-up display that all is working other than that the screens are controlled left thumb here for the digital instruments, zoom out to that, and right thumb here for the middle screen, or using the touch, or the lower touchpad, that works as well. And I think really cool to have this manual climate unit still so good to control it while driving, actually. Well, there's one design flaw or quality flaw I found. The printing of the start-stop engine button looks a little bit weird. Other than that, I think very good build quality in here. This lower area, yeah, a lot of black panel lacquer here. The handles are quite cool. Then when you slide this one open, you have your phone connection for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Another USB charger. Inductive charging would also be possible. Then the cup holders are heated and cooled if you pick the option. It's also a very nice one and they're really, really large. Then this touchpad next to that, you have the drive mode selector and a lot of things are coming up here when the driving part begins because you can put it in sports mode, comfort mode, curve mode, this is where the car leans inside and off-road mode is also very interesting because in the off-road mode here 
when you have said that, when the car is on, when it is in the gear and you are in the off mode mode, then you can actually add some other cool stuff and go here to the settings and go to the off-road assist and have this individual wheel control and then you can actually say I want to have it lower on the left side and high on the right side and you also see it on camera how it switches um, so really impressive system especially then for off-road use not sure how many people will actually use that other than for showing off and the free driving mode is the most funny one and everyone on this parking lot will wonder now because then the car actually moves up and down and you can also start going front or reverse um, to get loose of some you know sand situation or something like this so really cool stuff other than that you can also tune in the air suspension lower or higher here with your um, you know separate button and then there's this armrest split way opening and more usb c charger just to show it once more up close here again there it is where you can control the individual wheels also in the rear for example like this and then here with the free driving mode you can pick that other than that it's a really good system it has a nice overview where to find everything the apple carplay um, actually you can have it here right there that's a, such a great song and there's the integration and the sound we don't have the top audio system here but this one always has a nice one sound well cool Wow, really cool. And we experienced that quite a lot of times now with the Mercedes that they have some of the best optional optional sound systems, but even their base sound system or there's often a middle trim sound system, they already do a good job if you don't want to spend too much money. So, and GPS looks like this, also with a nice modern visualization. Oh, look at the small clouds. That's, I think, also well done. And here with the driving modes, again, up close, this is the curved driving mode. And with the curved driving mode, you can also set it to three different levels, how extreme you want to have the car leaning inside the, the corner. E-Active Body Control is this additional system, but it's really, really expensive. You have to think about it if it makes sense for you. And the review camera, like this, is a very good resolution. You also have the drone view from above if you have this optional 360 degree view and also the helping lines adapt accordingly here we can also pick the exact angle also here to protect your tires left and right or just the front cam and so on so a lot of different possibilities now the digital instruments you can also put the map in here you can also have it full screen here with the map that is possible so you're really flexible with these digital instruments they also have a clear display you can also go to sports gauges, for example, and you can also switch some individual information you want to see left or right, for example, or then again in the middle. Here, for example, you can also switch to left gauge like this, and yeah, you can play around with that pretty a lot. And the head-up display with the huge projection, current speed, loud speed, or the direction you're going, and you can also adjust which parts you want to see there so a very flexible system and again a very very large projection it's even larger than it appears here on camera rear compartment also soft touch article at the inside of the rear seat it's really cool inside the rear seat door and then what's cool here is you have about the best leg room in this very segment this has been upgraded with this new generation a little bit longer wheelbase and i mean i could sit a little bit more back now if i put put the steering wheel a little bit more out but still there's plenty of leg room left and one of the reasons is that the back bench here is quite short and it falls a little bit backwards so i mean it's still comfortable here but it's very very low placed and falls backward for example in the bmw x5 i think you sit more comfortable as a rear passenger also in the audi q8 or audi q7 then they're more upright you sit more like let's say like like this you know um, and that's more comfortable, I think, um, but it has then less leg room. So I think it's, you know, it's basically a trade-off. There's also an option available, not equipped with this very vehicle, that you can move the back bench, about like it's like 10 centimeters, four and a half inches, something, front and rear. So you can go for this option. There's also a seven-seater option available. However, I think it also makes more sense for the GLS. Still, comfortable experience. 
But I think especially when you would have kids, I mean, you have a lot of space to like move child seats in and out. That's good. However, even I as tall adults feel a little bit lost in here, you know, like sitting so low. <laughs> Do you see that on camera? Yeah. But then again, the more leg room, that's the thing you gain with that then. I also think that the outside parts each, also with a beautiful microfiber inside, you flip the seats already from here, like this, two third, one third split. But you also have the ski hatch available that you can also flip the one thing. Then cup holders here also adaptive for the rear. And you can also get a rear climate unit if you like to control everything of that. And also USB-C device, two chargers here for the rear. Oh, and there's even ambient lighting at the rear footwell. So we can open the hatch right there or also with pressing the key. Here we go. So and at the moment I've already removed the top cover and liter figures 8 or 25 to 2055 liters. That's quite impressive. And the interesting thing is here, you can put this top cover here below and this is a very good storage. So, so many times you wonder where to put that thing when you remove it. Here they found actually an interesting possibility and you can of course install it right there. Here we go. There's also seven seater option available, told you earlier, but not in this case then. And you can see you have a very good square area. And now some measurements. So the width here is actually more than a meter. So more than a meter in width, that's quite good. Length, normal length of a trunk is also a little bit more than a meter. The height here up to the cover approximately would be about 40 centimeter. And the overall height here on the top part about 80 centimeters. To flip the seats we either have to go around but here when the cover is not mounted then we can actually also do that from here with a little help like this and you can also if you have the option move the bench a little bit forward that would be possible but here yeah a little bit under two meters then to the front seat as I would be driving that's also pretty cool and the last, last visual impression I can also put some luggage in here that you can see how the dimensions you can also refer to. And if you have the air suspension, you can also lower the vehicle here a little bit for loading. And the child safety test, how does that one look like? Whoa, whoa. Yeah. A little bit stronger than usual from a Mercedes hatch here. Uh, strange. Let's test it again. Here we go. That's what I was expecting, but still the first one was also not too harsh. So usually Mercedes got it quite right here with the torque. Second time worked even better. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Mercedes GLE, GLE 450 here with the inline six cylinder, now SM have mild hybrid system. And we're going to do some city driving. We are going to head on to the motorway. Then we first start with the slower speeds and then we'll also floor it out, max speed, really high speed, check noise installation and so on and so different aspects coming up here. Interesting here, you can see the camera side here on the center display, and this actually always happens. You can turn off and on that function when you're approaching the next traffic light. And I mean, here in the GLE, it's not that critical because the windscreen is quite high. But for example, in the CLA, um, that was very relevant, this function, it is meant to be a traffic light visibility, so Sometimes, you know, traffic lights are placed way low and then you have to like, where is it? I can't see it. And that way you can just sit like this. All good. Then you can see the traffic light jumping to green here on the screen. Yeah, it's some kind of pre decadent function, but you know, again, <laughs> for vehicles that have very low windscreens, that might make sense. Why not? Very interesting. So we have 21 inch wheels mounted here, so rather bigger ones that of course reduce the comfort a little bit. Um, you feel it in some smaller bumps on the road, so if you want more comfort then go for smaller wheels. However, there is the air suspension mounted in here and that is still set on a soft node, which is pretty cool. like it when air suspensions are still set on a soft node and that is the case for the Mercedes non-AMG models. If you pick an AMG model with air suspension, then they make it that stiff that you can't really feel it's an air suspension anymore. But 
to me the GLE one of the best comfort rides overall actually so one of the most comfortable cars to me then again with the combination with the Dynamica Artico seat also keeping me cool in summer and warm in winter it's a very good choice and the seat form itself here also from the sport seats is still very comfortable and you have a little bit more side support in this case the car is also extremely silent very well insulated we'll soon experience that how it looks like when we are at really higher speeds the steering is actually rather soft and not too direct it does not have any dead angle that's good gives you a good feeling however mercedes has the philosophy of not making them too progressive so you have calma running straight and then in corners you have to steer a little bit more but that's just a matter of preference then seeing here told you earlier the amg steering wheel here with the you know sportier style and the let's say brushed aluminum look right here amg line also because of the seats interior didn't have it on exterior so different suspension modes we have also for the air suspension so when we go for example to the sports mode suspension gets stiffer and I'm sure maybe if you are also here hear that the gears are turned up higher in this case also so um, we can experience that on the motorway the three and for the sport here driving this three liter inline six cylinder does give you quite some good performance definitely told you the figures earlier and also has actually a decent sound still and with this new mf technology on the left gauge you can see eq charge so at the moment i'm going downhill the car is recuperating so gaining maximum energy and then when i accelerate it is used both for better fuel economy and for an additional boost when you really floor out the car so and so far the experience was that it does actually make sense in this case we had some engines where there again the traffic and well in this case it does make sense here so at the moment the traffic light stands in a way that here the back mirror and you know the plate above that everything is blocking that so i could not i would need to do like like this and that way i can just like hey i'm in my gle you know <laughs> you can just look at the camera light yeah learning to appreciate this function <laughs> yeah why not modern times right so uh, yeah back to the mf system in this case here for this engine it really seems to make sense because okay when you drive at high speed it will consume a lot of fuel anyway um, then you can also score some 12 liters or more kilometers that's no wonder then the mf system also doesn't help but especially here in city driving oh look at that you see the white vehicle uh, SL Coupe that was blocked by the white Fiat 500 not sure if you could see it in the small camera what a beautiful vehicle yeah, always laughing on the auto fuel. sorry I'm always looking out for different car models you know other car enthusiasts you do that and say oh look this guy oh, oh, oh I've been driving this one 10 years ago and I, like something like this <laughs> so the MF here especially here in city traffic stop and go it really works and can get us actually down to about 9 to 10 liters on one kilometers which is excellent for a vehicle of this size and this size of engine which would be about like you know, 25 26 mpg us even some 30s mpg uk That's of course pretty cool just when you floor it out then as i said more than 10 liters on one kilometers that would be rather than like some you know 23 mpg us and 26 mpg uk and when you floor it out so but you have the possibility to drive this car here in a reasonable economic way and again if you if you're gentle with the vehicle you can score equal consumption figures here with the three liter six cylinder like with the two liter four cylinder that shows again downsizing is just using on paper it's not making sense for the environment you know in a practical effective way at least is for six cylinders the eight cylinders however they consume way more fuel than these six cylinders so to me from my experience the three liter six cylinders also different brands seem to be the best engines consumption wise power wise you know you just run them at lower rpms that also makes sense and also good for long-term durability now i'm switching to the sports mode and do some first acceleration from 
50 to 80. Plop, that's it already. But that was a little bit, you realize that? A little like stuttering in acceleration. Hmm, that was strange. I haven't experienced that so far. Um, I mean, it wasn't really the engine, it was rather the shifting that was a little bit, seemed a little bit confused, wasn't it? We test it again when we flow it out in a max way, once again, very soon. Now the first motorway test, 80 kilometers an hour so far. Cruise control you set here on the left side of the steering wheel. There's also the adaptive cruise control built in here. And also this maxed out with the assistance systems. So we also have the active lane keeping assist and we'll see. Um, it tells me that it actually works. It depends on sometimes here in the yellow construction side markers, the systems work, sometimes not. Of course, I'm you know, really cautious here doing, doing these tests here, but so far, so I'm not steering at the moment. Now it's telling me I need to move the steering wheel, not capacitive yet, so it has a movement sensor, no, not, not a touch sensor. But here, keeping me in the lane, in the construction lane here, and I mean, it's a very narrow lane for this not so small car. Wow, that's well done, awesome, cool. So that's really cool. I mean, those tricky situations are then, in a way, always good to test them right here as well. There's also a blind spot monitor built in the side mirrors. So triangle, small triangle. Let's see if we can use it very soon when vehicles are overtaking us. So I'm always picking in the left lane here because you can drive 80 here and 60 on the other lane. Then he there, there it's going to 80. <laughs> a little bit faster on, on this lane here. Pretty funny. So assistance systems wise, good impression so far. Um, also autonomous emergency brake is standard anyway. And then the upgrade assistance systems you can get into, you know, into another pack, optional package. Different driving modes, by the way, here again on the motorway, I would rather set it to the comfort mode to have like with this floating air suspension style. And here when the road is even, the 21 inch wheels also are no problem. Just when some bumps are appearing, then you feel the, the size of the wheels. Other than that, I really love that air suspension that is built in here. Such an awesome ride. So what's that here? Not sure. But that's uh, giving us a good possibility to test the blind spot monitor, which should appear right now. Yeah, there it is, red triangle. And when I set the turning indicator, it should change something, but it doesn't. Hmm. Well, in this case, just red triangle appearing. Sometimes it's, it's the case that when I set the turning indicator, there's like an additional warning, but I wonder why isn't that the case in this this case. I'm not sure if you can deactivate it in the menu or something, but here in this case, just a red triangle. Anyways, here the adaptive cruise control, setting it now to 100 kilometers an hour. Again, such a perfect silent ride, awesome, really comfortable on the motorway, now keeping the distance of the car in front of me. And another very interesting mode is we not only have the air suspension here, we also have the e-active body control, which is enabling us with this curve mode. And in this curve mode, the car is evening out the G-force by leaning into the corner like a motorcycle. And so when I go here now, the car is upright still. So this is, so to say, Mercedes way to not use an anti-roll control, but use this one here, this diving into the corner with that. And it's, it's really, really funny. So um, it's a very unique driving experience. We'll soon head on to the motorway again and just want to give you more acceleration. Yeah, there again, the camera picture. And when we are you know, on, on rolling onto the motorway, I can do some left, right. And then maybe you can see, it's really hard to see on camera. It's more like you experience that yourself. Um, but it's really like when you are in this slalom, the car keeps really upright and doesn't lean to left and right. And that's part then again of this curve system that the car is evening out the G-forces really amazing but here we go to the sports plus mode now and really hammer it out let's see about the acceleration of this engine 
and also then about high-speed noise insulation. 30 kilometers an hour, let's go! That's 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles per hour. Very decent acceleration. All wheel drive has a rear wheel bias, and now, even you're pretty stable at high speeds. You can also put the curve mode here now at higher speeds, see how that one plays out. Interesting. So, in the sports mode, the suspension is stiffer. That helps us to keep the car straight, but in the curve mode, it's also helping. So, but it's a different feeling. and steering feeling is a little bit loose in the curve mode um, compared to the sports mode. In the sports mode you have a stronger um, steering feeling. On the brakes now can very well, you know, very well feel the brakes, good to tune. Uh, however you feel the weight of the car, I mean, it's a big SUV so that's no wonder then. Also more decent sound in the sports plus mode from the exhaust and I think again that this six cylinder is a very good compromise. You know, it's not too much over the top like the eight cylinder. Still, you can drive it in a reasonable economic way. So, I think that's the, the engine to go for, definitely. And as I told you earlier, in city driving, it also makes sense, sense consumption wise because you can use this recuperation and so on. You know, in the tunnel, you can see more of the ambient lighting once again, right there. That's beautiful, so beautifully done. So I always enjoy night riding in these vehicles. Definitely here with the ambient lighting and there and also here in this area. Really, really cool. I'll see again when I hit the throttle. First the EQ power is being used because there was some energy left. So when you're rolling or just accelerating a little bit, again you get this help. And this also explains why the consumption can be put down. Of course, after like a big acceleration like this now has looked different but you know that's also no wonder so when we get off the motorway now I'll um, show the curve mode once again the interesting thing is you can set it actually how extreme it shall react so one two three so three levels overall you can set for that and level one would just be you know, like that you hardly feel it level two would be then a little bit more let's see we go to the curve mode so again, show the actually the difference. So level one again. Um, this is just slightly. You don't see it. You feel it a little bit, but you can't see what the car is doing. In level two here now, um, it feels more extreme, so to say, and more unique. And you already see it with your own eyes that the car is leaning a little bit into the corners and. Level 3 then is even more and this is really a very peculiar driving feeling because yeah, it's really hard to describe, you know, so when you're going like some left and right you can almost shake up the car yourself but not in the usual way, you know, usually when you do like fast left right it would be like the car like but in this case it's that the car is like doing these movements you know, especially with the, the the front, especially dips a little bit in, so it's like the, you know, like the opposite side. So it's a very funny, unique driving experience, especially if you set it to lean level three. And I mean, it. <laughs> I have a little bit mixed feelings about it because the driving feeling is so unnatural and unlike everything you know. Then again, you can also argue for it that the g forces are being like covered for you and especially then for the passengers. Since, you know, as a driver, you can always hold onto the steering wheel, but the other passengers can't. Um, I'll soon turn, I'll turn left and then see if I can also do it a little bit fast. And may, maybe you can even pick that up on camera, how the car is leaning then in, inside the corner. And to me, as a motorcycle driver, I um, always like some motorcycle uh, quotes, or so, <laughs> so to say, when, when cars do that. So now we have some nice corners up ahead, and now we're at level three. And 
doing some left and right. This is so funny. <laughs> yeah, when the car dips in on the underside and when you are in the corner actually, then usually the car would go to the outside, but you've maybe seen it, it really keeps all the way straight. You know, because then there's again this, this one force against the other force and use the force, young Padawan. And there's really a lot of fun. So especially when you are in agile driving situations in the countryside, then it's it's really a lot of fun. Again, not a natural driving experience, but something unique and fun if you want to spend the extra money on it. Uh, you know, there was also like this music um, performance from the GLE, like with the like lowrider style, which you can theoretically program if you hack into the system what the engineers did for fun. So this suspension can do a lot, but do you really need it? Hmm. I think for this extra price, no, it's super expensive to opt for it. In my opinion, you're just fine with the normal air suspension with this vehicle and, and just enjoy it. And so e-active body, e body control, I think nice tech gadget, but not really necessary. There would be one use case that is, um, you know, when you are in, in an off-road situation and then you use this, you know, like up and down feature to really get out of loose sand. That would be possible. And you can really do that your own, on your own here in the, in the vehicle. But to me, that would be the only real use case. So 100 kilometers an hour, sports plus mode. And let's see when we're already at speed here now, what about the acceleration now, already shifted down the gear and let's go. Well, that's 200 once again, 200 kilometers or 125 miles now, and once again the noise installation. I mean, we are in an SUV. This is like a driving cupboard, <laughs> and it's still reasonably silent here. This wouldn't be a typical speed, of course. Um, let's go back to the comfort mode and go to a rather typical speed, which would be, for example, let's say 130 kilometers an hour, which is a reasonable motorway speed. And here at 130 kilometers an hour, super silent very decent ride i love that so definitely still one of my favorite suvs also especially one of my favorite cars overall as for the comfort suspension and seating wise and so on once again really enjoying it and would be one of my first picks actually if i think about doing longer trips like a holiday trip a road trip and so on so and Let's keep it up here now. Seeing once more on the curve mode. Yeah, it's re really so funny to drive this curve mode. The car feels way different in the indeed, you know, more like a motorcycle, <laughs> more or less. If you can talk about that when driving SUV. Um, yeah, but again, I think it's not a must have. It's when you have some money to spare and yeah, just want something very interesting technology-wise. Here at some lane changes, you maybe feel that. Um, sometimes it's feeling also a little bit aggressive, you know? Only when you, you know, turn the steering wheel a little bit more. It just feels a little bit sportier than overall. For the co-driver, it can actually make sense even more because as a driver, you always hold onto the steering wheel and even all the G-forces by that somewhat co-driver does not hold onto the steering wheel so this curve mode could especially serve the co-driver but that the air suspension is shaking up everything you know that would to me be just enough and then you're also not changing the driving modes <laughs> all the time all over again so yeah now again a little bit more silent driving 80 kilometers an hour also the visibility in this vehicle is awesome so upright windows all around the vehicle, also the rear. So although it's not a small vehicle, I have great visibility. I really exactly know what's going on around me. And also the visibility of the head-up display is great. You know, it has this zoom function or like standard setup. 
and it's really huge in your line of sight. So, yeah, it's really hard to find something negative with this car. You know, there was this story that they had a wrong supplier or wrong suppliers. Um, they're built in the, you know, in the US here. The, the GLE and the GLS and they had obviously made some bad contracts with bad suppliers and then they had pr um, quality problems and all the GLE and GLS they were sent to Germany then to be retrofitted with you know better tech and they were kind of yeah let's say repaired um, before that uh, most vehicles before they actually went to the customer then they decided to um, fire some people in um, in the management um, and then change the suppliers they say now everything is fine, you know, but yeah, stuff happens and especially when they're searching for cost savings, you know, and manufacturers nowadays, their margin is slipping away, they're searching for cost savings, then maybe pick um, cheaper suppliers. Um, yeah, but you see that can also fire backwards if they do some stuff like that and obviously they went back now to a little bit more expensive suppliers, less margin, but then again, better quality for the customer and, you know, after all the test cars we have done here, if I compare them, the US built cars with the German built cars, I couldn't really tell, you know. So um, when they have the right suppliers in place and the same um, you know, quality management systems, I wouldn't really see anything where I could say, oh, this is now like a US built or something, you know. The particle filters, that is different, you know. So this is also maybe one of the reasons, um, I'm not sure if, if the first engine we tested was already with MHEF at that point, I'm not sure. I think not, but it didn't have a particle filter. And when they don't have the particle filters, they also consume less. And again, particle filters are of course good for our breathing. Yeah, it's always a trade-off, definitely. So very interesting driving impressions here once again from the GLE and yeah, probably here the GLE 450 and also with this interior setup here with the seats unless you are in Europe and can also pick the fabric um, article mix which is like the fabric stays even a little bit cooler here than the Dynamica this configuration we have here today probably one of the GLEs then to go for what do you think now to the conclusion for today with the Mercedes GLE Still one of my favorite big or full-size SUVs because it does give you this air suspension carpet ride driving feeling, very comfortable in the seating position, very good in the seating choices for the sustainable animal free options and also especially if we pick a little bit you know a smaller wheels than we have here today the overall comfort it delivers you. Nice styling not too much over the top, quite sensual. Here in this new generation, a little bit sportier in the design. The interior with a nice build quality and also especially very cool ambient lighting. That's one of the features I like best actually with this vehicle. Nice voice input you have there, actually the best on the market at the moment. And the offering of space is also quite good. Seven seater option is available, as I said earlier. Doesn't make too much sense. I think then you would rather go with the GLS to really make you know use of it, out of it. E-Active body control, yeah. I mean it's a very interesting tech gadget, but also not really necessary. I would just pick it with a basic air suspension, maybe like 19-inch wheels or something, and you have the best comfort setup. And AMG line on the interior is a very nice option, especially with this microfiber seat stand here. So overall, I think one of the best. SUVs in this segment here at the moment. The BMW X5 is a little bit more fun to drive. This one here then rather the emphasis on the comfort. So it's up to you then which you find best. You can also tune into our SUV comparison episode. Then we also test it here against some other competitors. So see you there. Always interesting links in the video description and in the pinned comment. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We really love to have you here in our community. Thanks so much. See you next time.